All right, bass friends. Today we've got a special guest in the studio. You've seen him in a few videos I've done before, but this is the Music Man Bongo 4 that my friend Jeff is has been lending me for the last couple of weeks, actually. So thank you, Jeff. You're the best. And we are going to be doing a quick review of this. We're going to be talking about what this bass is, what it's trying to be, what you can do with it. So first off, we're going to start off with some specs, and then we're going to go into more of the looks and how it's made. And then we're going to dive into the sound. Let's dive in. So the Music Man bongos can come in four, five, or six string. This is the four string, um, but Jeff did something kind of interesting with this. He went through and he modified it to be strung B E A D instead of E A D G, which is pretty cool. But it'll definitely affect the way that we review and we evaluate this bass. So the body is made of bass wood or bass wood, depending on who you ask. Uh, the neck is made of maple, and the fingerboard is ebony if that matters to any of you. It doesn't matter much to me, but some people, that matters. Um, an interesting thing about, I'm not sure if it's just this particular bass, because this bass is um, in Titan Gray, but I think yeah, probably the bongos in general said on their website that it was made in conjunction with BMW Design Works, which is BMW's design firm that farms out designs to other companies like airlines and other people. There was one thing that I found interesting that kind of illustrates the design. I'm gonna turn down the volume on it and see if that helps. The slots for the batteries here, um, a lot of the times in other bases, they can be pretty finicky to get into. Um, but with these, if you can open them up, they just pop open and there's a tray that holds the battery and you can just slide it out, put it in and then pop that back in and it's just, it's smooth. I like that. It does have two batteries as well um, because they are very active pickups and they're quite powerful pickups. So this particular one is a standard 34 inch scale. So 34 inches from the bridge to the nut here. So looking at this base from an ergonomic perspective, it's like this cutout here, um, right here, on a lot of bases, it tends to make um, the neck sit a little bit further out this way which makes it hard to reach there um, on these lower frets. So it's, it's how it is in a lot of bases I found is that it just, it puts it out slightly this way. This base to me sits further this way and I actually find this to be a lot more comfortable than a lot of standard size bases I've played. It puts the neck in a really comfortable area. It might make it a little bit more difficult to get up here when you're sitting down. Um, but I think a lot of the times we're playing down here more often than anything. So it's important to have good ergonomics down here. Um, I haven't played with it standing up a bunch, um, but weight wise, it I think it's a little bit on the heavy side to me. So as far as the looks, like we said, this one's in Titan Gray. They come in other colors. I thought that this particular color scheme was rather, um, rather metal, if I don't say so myself. I think it looks cool. I think it looks cool. Um, some design things here. If you look here, the fret inlays are actually half moons, which I thought was cool. And I thought that was fitting with the, just the overall design and look of it. And that was cool. But that's pretty much it for looks and for specs. So let's talk about the sound. You've got your volume knob up top. This particular knob is a blend between the neck and the bridge pickup. And then you've got your four band EQ and each one of these knobs is actually two separate knobs. So you have a top and a bottom. You have your high mid frequency on the top here, your low mid frequency. You have your treble here on this bottom one, treble frequency. And then they have a bass boost here, which, you know, we're going to we're going to talk about that because that's it's a little bonkers. It's pretty fun. Going from the bass directly into my Mark bass, um, little Mark two. I have a mic on it, an Aston Microphones Origin on one of the speakers. I also have um, direct out from the amp into my audio interface. So I'm not doing any EQ, I'm not doing any compression. I'm, this is just what the bass sounds like, at least, you know, through the recording setup that I have. So this is what it sounds like. We're just going to noodle around on uh, the key of D here, just so we can get that low B string in here as well. So that's how it sounds with 
everything engaged. Um, and let's just go down the line here. We're gonna go to the pickup selector and we're gonna roll all the way to just be the neck pickup and let's see how it sounds if you're trying to emulate what a P bass would sound like. So everything else is 12 o'clock. So that's what it sounds like with just the neck pickup. Um, I think it sounds very, very P-Bass. It's got a really great sound. It doesn't sound like, you know, a passive vintage P-Bass um, because how could it? It's an active pickup and you're not gonna get the same tone as you would with like, a, you know, that, that bass, which is just a, a vintage passive P-Bass. So let's move on to talk about the bridge pickup. Um, so if we roll that back, so it's just this pickup. With the bridge pickup, it doesn't give you that mid-range growl that you'd get out of a jazz bass. It's a very different tone that it kind of accentuates. And it could just be the placement of the pickup or just the pickups that they used. But whatever it is, it, it doesn't give you that mid-range growl. I think it gives you a very defined mid-range. And I think it's very usable, but probably not in the same way that you would use, uh, you know, a jazz bass tone. You're not going to sound like Jaco is pretty much what it comes down to, which is not a bad thing. It's just, um, you know, if you buy this bass, don't expect it to be able to sound like a classic jazz bass. But let's move on and let's talk about um, the high mids here. So this is what it sounds like just normal. <laughs> This is what it sounds like with those high mids engaged all the way. So you get a lot of attack with that high mid, um, which is great for a lot of different things. And we'll come back to that in a little bit, but let's talk about the low mids as well. So if we boost, this is what it sounds like um, with everything flat again. And this is with those low mids boosted. So very, very different um, tone than I would have expected, honestly. Just like with the bridge pickup, which didn't accentuate any of those mid-range growl frequencies that you expect out of a jazz bass, this mid-range knob, the low mid-range knob, also doesn't accentuate any, any of those. They chose to kind of go a different route than, than the traditional jazz bass. It probably, honestly, would probably work better in more of a rock setting than in a jazz setting. And I'm sure there are times where you could use this particular tone in a jazz setting. But just thinking of from, you know, the perspective of trying to get that growl tone that you expect out of, you know, a lot of, a lot of jazz players like that that Jaco growl tone, but this isn't that. And so it's very different. It's very different than what, than what I had expected when I picked up this bass and it said that it had a four band EQ. But let's move on to the treble. Um, so this is what it sounds like with everything flat again. <laughs> And this is what it sounds like with the treble boosted all the way. I was kind of surprised at this particular treble knob because um, it gives you a lot of that definition. Um, but I, I don't know that it's that much different than what this high mid one was doing. And I'm not exactly sure which frequency ranges um, any one of these knobs are boosting just to my ear. You, you kind of have two knobs that are doing the same thing. It's to me, to me personally, and I'm sure other people with, you know, more trained ears 
we'll see this differently. But to me, it sounds like this high mid is a treble and this treble is also a treble. It's just slightly different. Um, to me, this one, the high mid gives you more of that definition that you expect out of like thumb slapping and even some metal genres. And then when you put in that, that, um, the treble in there, you get some of that bite that you would expect out of some of your like picking players. So even if I turn this high mid down and I play with a pick and granted, I'm not great with a pick, so don't judge me, but and then when you put in that high mid again, you get that bite, that attack that you expect out of a heavy metal bass. Um, you get pretty much two knobs to kind of dial in how much bite you want and how much clack you want when you're playing with a pick or when you're playing heavier with your fingers or even when you're playing thumb slaps. If we were to turn these up a little bit all the way. And even with you just, so if we turn the the mid range down and we just do the treble. So really, to me, these two knobs are specifically designed for hard rock and heavy metal people and thumb slappers. Really very much purpose built for those in my personal opinion. But let's talk about this bass knob next. Um, Cause this bass knob is just, it's bonkers. I, you can have a better experience if you use headphones, if you're listening over, you know, just phone speakers or computer speakers, you might not have the same experience because this is, this is really bonkers. But this is how it sounds with everything, um, just 12 o'clock again. And this is with the bass boost all the way up. Oh, yeah, I better turn that down. I don't know if you guys can hear that over whatever mic I'm going to have in the final mix here. Um, but when I play any one of those low notes on the B string here, I can hear my house rattling. Whatever frequency they decided to boost with this particular knob is just off the wall huge. It just makes your bass boom more than most other basses I've tried. Cause there are bass boosts on other basses like my Ibanez EHB and on the Dingwall. And it's like, you can boost the bass on those, but it, it just, this slaps differently. This hits differently and it hits you right here in the chest. So if you want to annoy your front of house guy, or if you want to annoy your neighbors, <laughs> you plug this into a nice loud amp, you crank that bass boost and you crank that volume. So it's going to rattle the whole place down, especially if you like live in an apartment complex, this, the whole place is just going to be shaking. That's a lot of fun. I don't know. <laughs> to some people, this knob is worth the $3,000 price tag because it is just bonkers what you can do with that. You can blend that in to taste. You know, let's just put it in maybe. Put on some of that low, that high mid. Maybe some of that treble. Oof. And I don't want to try to limit this bass to say that you could only use it in heavy metal, hard rock genres. I'm not saying you can't use this in a jazz world. I'm sure that you could do just fine. I mean, I played that vintage Ibanez for, I don't know, 15, 20 years in jazz and no one ever gave me a hard time. Like you, you can make whatever bass work in whatever genre you want. But from looking at this bass and from playing it over the past couple of weeks, I'd say that very much both the paint job as well as the EQ and just the way that this bass is, 
it's very much catered towards your more modern heavy metal, hard rock, thumb slapper kind of people. All right, friends. So we're going to wrap this video up here. Um, actually, Jeff just came by, which is why there's a little bit of a change. I don't have the bass with me. He came by to get his bass, but also he dropped off a new one. So I'm going to be reviewing that here in a little bit. Um, hopefully have a ton of videos coming out with that one. Super excited about that one. But also huge thanks to Jeff for letting me review and, and try out and test out his Music Man Bongo Titan Grey. Um, he's a huge collector, so he's got a ton of really great bases and they're all pricey, limited edition kind of things. So that Music Man Bongo 4 has been uh, just a pleasure to play. It's been awesome. I, you know, I've never played Music Man before. That was the first time really diving in and playing any kind of Music Man bass. But if I had to sum up that bass, I'd say that it's it's not the one bass to rule them all. It's not the one bass that you buy that you can, you know, tweak the EQ to do literally everything. And it can sound like a jazz bass and it can sound like a P bass and it can, you know, do thumb slapping and it can do all this. It's like it can do a lot of stuff, but it's not trying to be a jazz bass clone. It's not trying to be a P bass clone. It's not trying to be any of that. It's trying to be its own thing. And that's a difficult thing to pull off nowadays. Most basses are really just like, they're jazz bass and P bass clones, a lot of them. And they have, you know, some special flair that they give, but this one is a departure from that. It's saying, you know what? We don't, we don't need to be like Leo Fender. We can be our own thing and we can carve out our own niche and a lot of people who play metal play bongos or, or stingrays. And I think for good reason is like, they've really carved out that kind of sound in their EQ and that kind of sound in, in, in the pickups that they've used. And it's a very unique sound. And I don't know that I could get that sound with any other bass that I own. But yeah, I think it's a fantastic bass. I don't think that anyone would be sad that they bought a bongo, even at that price tag. Like you wouldn't be sad, you would use it. I would use it. If I had one, I would I would totally use it. I'd put it to use. I'd be recording with it. I'd be gigging with it. it it's a fantastic bass. Um, I think probably the only cons that I would say that this bass has is it's a little heavy. Um, and the only other con is that you can't get that mid-range growl. But once again, they designed it intentionally to not give that mid-range growl, that Jaco tone that you get out of of a traditional jazz bass so it's, it's kind of a con it's not really a con because it's like they didn't design it to do that and so obviously it wouldn't be able to do that to sum up it's a fantastic bass it's well designed it's well made it looks cool uh, you know as long as you don't mind the the pick guard the toilet seat pick guard <laughs> but otherwise it looks really cool um it's got fantastic eq it sounds good i mean it, it, it's a win you know and it's it's an expensive base but it would be a great base to have in anybody's collection anywhere so let me know what you guys think though you know what do you think of mongrels what do you think of music mans um and what do you think of of these reviews would you like to see more um and what kind of stuff would you like to see obviously i'm going to be reviewing the next base that my base benefactor jeff has given me but yeah you guys let me know what kind of stuff do you want to see next thanks guys have a good one